Sahil, thank you very much for being with me today. We thank are at the me. Center for Device Innovation at Texas Medical Center. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, introduce yourself and your role with Sakin Health. Yeah, my name is Sahil Dwan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of SoftCon Health, uh, or Otoset is the world's first and only automated ear cleaning device. Fantastic, thank you. So before we dig into Otoset, mm -hmm. I want to learn a little bit more about you. Did you develop an interest in technology or engineering at an early age, or was there a specific event in your life that led you to medical devices? Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. My father is actually a bigger techie than I am, um, so I've certainly had it from a young age. Uh, and I taught myself how to code when I was about 16. But I thought, you know, since I have these programming skills, let me go study some business. I've always kind of had that entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I think I started my first kind of website, small company, when I was 17 or 18. So it's been something with me for a long time. But now I'm, I'm glad I studied computer science in the end. Well, how do you think that that's impacted your current role or how it's influenced your current role? Yeah, I mean, well, with my last two companies, I was the CTO of those. So I was that person kind of behind the scenes building it. And that allowed me to really watch what was going on kind of on the front lines and observe and find out what we did right and what we did wrong. So this time around as CEO, I come in with a lot more experience and I found people who are way better than us, um, than me, to, to actually build this thing. So uh, we have a fantastic group of engineers. Did you have any inspiration in your early life? Uh, I know that you taught yourself, so mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you're an inspiration. But did anybody help inspire your direction? Certainly my parents. Uh, my parents are immigrants. They came here when they were in their early 20s, and they've made a really good life for us and our family. Um, and I also say my cousin, Sonny, um, who's very entrepreneurial himself. Um, they give me the confidence to go out and do what I do every day. Um, my parents gave me a really good work ethic, and that's something I continue to, to have today. Would you say that work ethic is what has made you successful? Um, I'd say partly. It's partly work ethic, but it really ties into preparation again. Being prepared, than your comp more prepared than your competition is really the, the most important thing in my, in my eyes. Perfect. So now let's get into SAC and Health, mm -hmm. and more particularly um, um, Otoset. Yeah. So what is the story behind the company? Yeah. So yeah, I never thought we'd be in the earwax business. I'll tell you that. Um, it's a good story. So my brother is 23 today. We're two years apart. Um, he's my younger brother. And um, he's had this problem since he was a little kid where he would just develop too much earwax in his left ear. Get to a point where he couldn't hear out of it. Um, we just thought he was this weird kid with earwax, and it, that was not the case at all. Uh, so he'd have to go to a primary care physician every few months to get his ears cleaned out. Uh, and it became a regular thing. So he grew up, recently graduated, studying bio biomedical engineering at the University of Arizona, um, found our team of engineers, and, and came up, really invented the idea for our Otoset. set. Um, and then we spent the first few months of the company talking to physicians. So I went out and I talked to you over 100 uh, primary care physicians and ENTs to find out if this was worth doing or if it was just crazy, right? To really understand how big this problem was or if my brother was just an outlier. Um, and that's really cool about inventing something is that you're inventing something to solve your own problem, but you don't know if it's a real business, right? You need to figure out if enough people have that problem and if it's a big enough problem that they're worth looking for a solution to pay for it, you know, to, to solve it. So that was how the company started. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago we started development. Uh, so how our Otoset actually works, it uses pulsed irrigation directed towards the walls of the canal to break down wherever the wax is in the ear, and then suction to suck it back out into an outflow container. So if it's fully self-contained, no mess procedure. Um, and the more interesting thing is how they do it today is still how they've done it since 1821 with an ear and bladder syringe, uh, when an autologist decided to use a bladder syringe to clean the ear. So that's remained the standard of care for almost 200 years now. And uh, so this has really become a very innovative thing in the space that's been overlooked for so long. Uh, we're taking a procedure that takes about 20 to 30 minutes in the primary care setting down to minutes. That's amazing. And it made me think of something I heard Dr. Billy Cohn say. And mm -hmm. Dr. Billy Cohn is the director yeah. of CDI, as you know, a uh, renowned heart surgeon, mm -hmm. obviously. So he had mentioned that men people mm -hmm. uh, trip over the truth and most times stand up, brush themselves yeah. off, and go. It sounds to me like you tripped over the truth that this was an unmet clinical need. Yes. You stopped and you did something about it. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think we didn't want to dive into it. Um, I mean, I learned the hard way in my past to dive, you're diving into something that you think is really cool, but not enough people think is really cool. Or it's really not a solution to a big problem. Um, and we were surprised by this one. I mean, but the uh, primary care physicians see about 12 million earwax removal uh, procedures every year in the United States alone. It's a problem that affects about 600 million people around the world. Uh, so it's certainly not a small market, certainly not a small problem, but it's been an overlooked one for very long. Do you have any idea why it may be so overlooked or mm -hmm. an underdeveloped space? 
Yeah, I mean, it, kind of like the if you kind of look at the innovation in primary care or, or in the NT space in general, it's, it's kind of a harder market to break into, um, and it, it's just typically overlooked, and, and it's hard to find the problems unless you're a physician yourself. We kind of stumbled across this one and made sure that it was a real problem. I think the one interesting thing going forward as we do our next product is being more involved with physicians and really understanding their needs first and what problems they're seeing every day and then developing products around those needs rather than developing a product and trying to fit it into a need. So your order makes a lot of sense to me. Talking about Otoset just a little bit, mm -hmm. When did you realize when you were de in development that you had something very special? Yeah, um, I would say that back to when we initially started. So we started that initial research about two years ago. Um, my brother was just graduating in undergrad um, and I was, I was living in LA at the time and we were talking, we went out talking to physicians and we had a really high response rate. Um, we hadn't done anything yet. We had a drawing and that was it. Um, and it looks like a pair of headphones. So it was, it was really cool to kind of go around and show this, this rendering of it. Um, but that's when we, when we started getting really high response rate, when we started having the conversations with these physicians and literally asking them like, hey, are we crazy to build something that cleans your ears or is this a real problem that you have? And they absolutely understood the problem and are really looking for a solution for it, but there was just nothing good out there. Um, so we got a lot of support from physicians really early on. Uh, we developed the prototype, uh, did our clinical trials, raised a successful round of fundraising. We actually oversubscribed it. Um, so all those things lining up very quickly in the last year and a half has been a lot and, it, and it's really good forward momentum. Sounds exciting. Yeah, it's been fun. Can you walk me through the journey of a patient from mm -hmm. maybe diagnosis to the implementation of Otoset? Yeah, um, so you have a few settings. So let's say like your clinic setting, your hospital, your private practice, right? Uh, somebody comes in, they have an earwax impaction. Uh, the nurse or the physician is going to look in their ear with an otoscope, identify that impaction, take our Otoset, um, put warm water into the top container, fit the device to the patient's head, select which side they want to clean. They can do both at the same time if they need to, and then hit start. And then 35 seconds later, take it off, double check the ear with an otoscope again, and you're done. How long did it take the old way? About 20 to 30 minutes with a ear and bladder syringe in a basin on your shoulder. So your brother every couple of years had to endure this? And every so few months. 12 mil every few every months? Every few months, yeah. 12 million other people as well? In the United States alone, yeah. That's unbelievable. It's a really big problem. It's and just, I'm, Never thought I would say I'm interested in earwax, but yeah. I am interested in earwax. Yeah, I think the statistics are about, uh, it's one in 10 children, one in 20 adults, and one in three people over 65. Unbelievable. Again, a very overlooked issue. So it sounds to me that you have several milestones that you've already achieved. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about your most recent? Yeah, our most recent was finishing up our clinical trials. So we, we have a device that's safe, effective, and has high patient satisfaction. What we're now focused on is physician usability. So making sure we have a device that physicians and nurses love to use too, otherwise it's just gonna sit in the, in the closet, right? Um, so that's what we're focused on now, along with uh, initial manufacturing, and then uh, starting our FDA submission later this year. Well, congratulations. Thank you. You had mentioned a little bit earlier that this market is unchanged for very long mm -hmm. and it's really hard to penetrate. Yeah. Um, how do you think you're going to penetrate a market that's been untouched for more than 200 years? Yeah, I think that it comes back to, it's, it's a market that's been overlooked, right? And these physicians are looking for a solution and they're very open to our solution. Like as we just do a lot of cold outreach and we have a very high response rate. So I think, uh, you know, Selling into in, in healthcare is hard in general, right? Uh, it's longer sales cycles and whatnot, uh, but we're able to get in front of the physician very quickly and pretty easily. Um, so I think we'll, we'll have a, a good chance of when we get out there of, of having a shorter sales cycle than most med tech companies. Well, I wish you the best, Thank you. for sure. This is a question I feel like the entrepreneur is not asked. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for in an investor or a strategic partner? What do you want out of that? Yeah, it's, it really is a partnership. And that's something I learned a lot raising our, our last round. Uh, you want people who, number one, believe in you and the team, and then obviously the product and the market. Uh, but it bring a lot more than just money. You need those people who are willing to make those connections, who are going out of their way, who are, who are you know, checking in all the time, being active, but not overly active, right? Um, and we're a young team. I'm 26, my brother's 23. Um, and uh, so we're always looking for advisors and mentors, and we have a great group around us now, you know, people who've been in med tech for 20 plus years. I think it's important to blend that experience with this kind of newer age of med tech. Well, Sahil, thank you. Thank I can't, you. This has been a fantastic interview and time with you. Thank you for I wish you me. the very best. Thank you.